good afternoon. Salamat, sorry. Uh, yeah, friends, I have to say, Excellency, and um, yeah, everybody else who is here. Um, yeah, I'm here for the finding committee, mainly because I'm in proximity. We try to save money for the next documenta. So <laughs> we don't want to spend it on us. No, but thank you so much, uh, Stefan Dreyer and Maya, for having me here. And it's um, for the first time I'm in this room since 13 years. We had here a workshop after our documenta and after Berlin Biennale with Enin, Suprianto, and Tunyap, and Kala was here. So it's amazing to be back here. Um, as much it is with great joy to be here and also my sincere congratulation to Ruan Krupa for taking over the torch of this really big exhibition. It's also a very, very sad moment for me personally. Um, yeah, my colleague Ogwin Wesor passed away not so long ago. He was uh, 35 years when he got appointed, which was quite young. He just had done maybe a few bigger exhibitions, maybe the biggest one, uh, the Biennale in Johannesburg. And um, at this moment, I just would like to read um, something he wrote me from the hospital. Um, when I wrote to him, uh, I sent him a WhatsApp, he WhatsApp back. I mean, Rowan Grupa got elected. And as always, uh, we were a bit of a fight club uh, in a positive way. We were always discussing, negotiating, um, yeah, and there was like, we, they always called us, we are a little bit like a university seminar, and he always said, what's wrong with that? So, Okvi wrote me back, send so much, Ute. I always believe the jury's task is to weigh everything before in the balance and come up with an agreeable choice. But I don't agree with the links to Documenta 11. That was a very different time and era. The world has changed since. I had a clear intellectual space I wanted to construct. Don't forget, I just had come out of experience of the Johannesburg Biennale only three years after the, after the end of apartheid. That was a searing experience in a country where Africans, for the first time in nearly 500 years, undid the brutal bond of colonialism and apartheid. I saw the world differently and I went for it. I was so fortunate to have found all of you in my corner and to work together with you all so dedicatedly in constructing an epoch mating Documenta 11 was amazing. The impact of the project came from our collective intelligence, but we were no collective. Remind that. 1998 was a real bomb when I was announced as the new artistic director of Documenta 11. It truly really changed the art world's petit, bourgeois, global compass, and nothing has ever remained the same. Good luck to Ruan Krupa. <laughs> yeah, Okwe was um, not only the first uh, director from the Global South, he was the first ever director outside of Europe, and Ruan Krupa is the first team ever outside of Europe. They have never had been an American artistic director, Latin American artistic director. So it is really something outstanding and um, no wonder, Sabine said, like Documenta is not so much known in this part of the world. No wonder, <laughs> we have to admit. Um, <laughs> We saw Documenta as a zone of activity. When we are asked, or when I'm asked also today, um, how would you describe Documenta in a sentence? And my response until today would be, and also to Ruan Krupa, the sky is the limit. It's the biggest art show in the world. It maybe has the most time of any art show in the world. And it has the biggest budget ever in the world. And I would say it also has one of the most committed teams in the world and I think it's something to go for and we always felt it's a responsibility we should take very serious and uh, in our hands. I'm also very happy to be here in the Goethe Institute because the Goethe Institute with its more than 140 institutes around the world has been always a close partner of this exhibition and it was always an infrastructure we could draw upon when we went around the world um, as much as one can do that. It's a world exhibition, but um, which team can ever cover the world of art is impossible. So 
it's always a fragment. Uh, Okwe, very quickly, to the surprise of the Documenta um, CEO at the time, uh, appointed six so-called co-curators, um, and they were quite a bit shocked that he came in with such a big team. Um, and they were even more shocked when uh, Okwe announced at a press conference, I was equally shocked because it hit me, when he announced Documenta will open 18 months before its official opening date, in my art school in Vienna at the Academy of Fine Arts. And um, it was about six months before, and I said, Okwe, how shall I manage this? And he said, you will manage. And I think this is always the saying at Documenta, we will manage. It's a big task, but with Documenta also a lot is possible. Um, yeah, it's a bit unreadable, but I just uh, want to mention, so Okwe Envisor initially uh, from Nigeria, then based in New York. The co-curators team consisted of Carlos Basualdo, also based in New York, but from Argentina, uh, myself, and Okwe always told me, you are also the first. Uh, I was the first uh, woman, the first female curator ever from Germany involved in a documenta, and um, this was in the 2000s. So, uh, Mark Nash, uh, who is from the UK, he initially was involved more in film, but soon we skipped that and we did everything together. Octavio Saya from the Canary Islands, um, which he always reminded us is actually not part of Spain, it's actually part of Africa. Uh, he also was based in the US then. Sarat Maharaj, um, Indian uh, uh, from his background, but born in South Africa, uh, also during apartheid, and therefore um, uh, moved with his family as refugees um, to Great Britain. And then Susan Guess, um, my colleague uh, from then the Renaissance Society, also from the US. Sabine already went through all the numbers. Uh, they're anyway a bit dark, but uh, so you got that. You see, every documenta reinvents itself. Different graphic design, different logo design, different team structure, different outlook, different everything. But that is the beauty of that exhibition. It can reinvent itself each time anew. Um, so, Okwe had this um, necessity, he said, like uh, many of the discourses that, of course, informed his proposal for Documenta, which was called the Black Box. Um, he said, these discourses are not from Kassel, and how will we ever discuss this in a city, a small city in the middle of Germany, how to discuss apartheid, colonialism, post-colonialism, and uh, many other uh, of the really important, to him, political questions of the time, and Documenta is always a sign of the time. How shall we do that? So he said, we have to go uh, where these discourses have been um, initiated, where they come from, the social political context where these discourses come from. We have to pay tribute and respect to these localities and start from there. So um, when it started in my school, this um, was not, um, this is our auditorium. Um, I was teaching then, I was a professor uh, at the Academy of Fine Arts at the time. Um, it's a 300-year-old school at this time already, founded by the emperor of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, as you see, a lot of gold, uh, a lot of uh, baroque, um, a lot of pride. Why Okwi choose that, uh, it was he wanted to be at the place where art usually starts, and that is art schools. He wanted to discuss the beginning of our documenta with art students, but he also wanted to discuss it at a location. Vienna was always at the edge, at the kind of the, um, how to say, like a threshold between the West and the East, politically, in terms of negotiations. It was one of the first really big um, diplomatic capitals, um, and he wanted to be also at a place where also democracy had uh, a very core uh, home. Our first platform was called Democracy Unrealized, and the keynote speaker, the inaugural speaker, was uh, Professor Stuart Hall. Uh, he also, when he said, like, we do it in my art school, I said, like, wait a minute. Um, we cannot do that in the school if the students are not really involved, not just symbolically. So we had these six weeks of intense seminars, and all the students were involved. Uh, Hito Steyl, uh, then a PhD student of mine, um, became uh, kind of like, she did a seminar called Imagining Democracy, with like films, etc., and seminars, filmmakers coming in. And then we had uh, Oliver Markhardt, a uh, political scientist, 
um, who did um, also a seminar on what is democracy development. So with the students, we would also interview the speakers, etc. So it was a real access for the students in all of that. My colleague, Helmut Zomernik, who also participated in Documenta 9, did a design, and what you see as these beautiful chairs, and so there, they were from the emperor's um, furniture depot, and all of these chairs were involved in the signature of some democracy decisions, the signing of the Second Republic of Austria, etc. So what we used for the seminar were actually all chairs that had been used for the history um, of these democracies in the making, which was also very important for us negotiating with the students. The second part of Democracy Unrealized took place, uh, again, with the help also of the Goethe Institute, and the House of World Cultures in Berlin. There, the inaugural speakers were um, Sihu Yan Chui from Beijing, who is a global economist. Um, we said we cannot separate economy, politics, um, activism, um, art, and um, other intellectual thoughts about this world from a documenta. Katrin David, already with 100 Days, 100 Guests, set a sample for this, but Okwe wanted to have much more involvement. He said, like, this has to be truly antidisciplinary. Everybody has to wade in for what's going on in the world. And uh, so also um, we had, um, to our great honor, also a Nobel laureate um, in literature, Holy Swinka from Nigeria there. We had more than 100 um, global intellectuals um, speaking in all of our platforms and we visited the war tribunals in The Hague to understand what it means um, to have those tribunals. Uh, we went to many places with artists, with those people. All of this is maybe less seen in the making of a documenta. And so also our um, project to teach the guides for documenta, we had more than 100 young art historians um, to guide this documenta, also from different parts of the world. They took place in a six-month seminar with us at the Art School of Kassel to really communicate to the audience what this documenta wanted to achieve. Yeah, the second uh, platform, Experiments with Truth, Transitional Justice and the Processes of Truth and Reconciliation, took place in India at the Habitat Center in New Delhi together with an exhibition of more than 50 filmmakers who dealt uh, with changed landscapes in post-colonialism, and um, which um, basically brought us also to very hefty debates in the Habitat Center, with more than 700 people attending every day the discussions, uh, including the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, but also the head of the Communist Party of India, but also a lot of people from the diplomatic corps, um, particular from South Northern um, African countries who wanted to stop our speakers even from giving their speeches. So it became political, it became very intense, but I think this is what a documenta is about. Um, our uh, third platform, a Creality and Realization, took place in St. Lucia at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. It was non-public workshops. We were very criticized for that, that this is non-public but it was on a purpose. It was really important to allow the communities of the Anglophone and the Francophone um, colon former colonial countries to also meet together and discuss uh, even this constellation. And um, also they said, oh, it's in a luxury hotel. Um, if you see the date, it was in January 2002. This was a few months after 9-11. We were basically alone in this hotel and we paid very little money for the whole thing. This is why we went there. Um, also, the um, last platform Okwe wanted to have also in uh, his native uh, country in uh, Nigeria. It took place at the Goethe Institute. Again, um, in many countries, the Goethe Institute, and I also have to say British Council or Alliance Francaise, uh, is, are places where freedom of speech can take place. It's a protected space where many discussions can happen and also where infrastructure is on site. We could not have done this conference at that time in Lagos. Today, Lagos looks slightly different. Um, we can talk about those things later, but I mean, also in Indonesia, you know it, what it means, political transitions, uh, military presence, etc. 
So it took place on Victoria Island, uh, and it was for the first time that many African intellectuals met in Africa for conference. Usually conferences across African um, intellectuals, etc., take place in Europe. It's very difficult to travel across Africa. There are no planes, usually they fly back to their colonial country, and then you form a colonial country, and then you fly back to Africa. We didn't thought about that when we organized it, so it was a bit of a nightmare. But at the end, as always with Documenta, we achieved. You see here, um, Okwe sitting in the middle. Um, it was called Under Siege, Four African Cities, Freetown, Johannesburg, Kinshasa, and Lagos. Yeah, and the last platform, finally, um, we said like the last platform at the core, at the heart of Documenta in Kassel should be finally an exhibition. It should be dedicated to artistic production and not be overshadowed by too many talks and conferences. Uh, of course, there were many events. You never can stop doing this with a documenta. But we tried to basically separate this to really have the full focus also on the exhibition. Uh, Sabine mentioned it already. I don't need to um, continue with what she already introduced. But I also want to say we um, also published eight books. Um, Two of them were ready two years after we finished Documenta. Our poor editor was still editing two years later. But uh, finally, the books were out. In the meantime, they're all sold out. Um, we also, as I said, we trained 100 art historians, um, many of them leading institutions today around the world. We had a young curators program uh, supported by the RAVI program and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Germany. These were nine young curators from Mexico, from Belarus, uh, they stayed six months with us in residency in Kassel. Again, many of them heading museums today. So I think also the impact, the educational impact that the Documenta leaves on people is very, very crucial, who, like those who are involved. This ranges from the people installing um, to uh, the many volunteers, etc. And I also just want to mention, we started also as a very, very small core team. We basically fitted in one office, beside of the few people from Documenta uh, GmbH itself. But then, um, when it comes to the installation, the, key, the team, just the installation team, suddenly grows to 150 people installing at the same time, and about 230 people had to be feeded, basically, during the installation. Um, so you see, it really rapidly grows and becomes a very expansive enterprise. Yeah, here again, um, Okwe, he was um, really young when he started, um, and, but as I said, like, he had many dreams, also for a post-colonial constellation, as he said, and um, I think he went for it, and I wish also Ruan Grupa will do the same. I just flipped very quickly through some images, because many people of you have not been in Kassel, and I even learned Ruan Grupa, many of you have not seen a documenta, maybe that's a good thing. So you invent your own one. <laughs> yeah, I know that far it was there. <laughs> but then again, each documenta is different. So just to give a bit of a scope, I mean, each documenta has different venues, which has to do with possibilities. But always at the heart is the Museum Fredericianum. It has been at the core for every edition. So it was also very crucial for us. Um, yeah, you see it here, as Sabine said, it was the first uh, purpose-built museum in Europe ever um, that existed. I think this is why it's also so important to start from there, usually, with the documenta. And, um, yeah, we had the flags. Um, every documenta has a different design. Uh, we, of course, asked many famous designers at the end. Uh, we decided for an artist, Ecke Bonk, who did the color scheme and also did all of our books, because we thought, and he also was a participating artist, so we thought, like, let's stay in-house. This is the daily impression of a documenta. Yeah, as you saw, these numbers um, mean several thousand visitors a day. Um, it's Okwe and I stayed 100 days in, in Kassel. We went through the exhibition every single day, talked to visitors, tried to understand the experience, and it shapes you for life. To talk to so many visitors from different parts of the world, um, you never will forget that, and it makes you really understand how privileged you are. You can serve an audience with your thoughts, and it sticks with you. And I still think it informs 
me today in my work and probably also is a reason why I'm today in uh, this part of the world. We inaugurated Documenta, um, how can it be small, um, in the theater of Kassel with an opera by William Kentridge, uh, which was about smoke. And um, this is really what I want. also want to tell Ron Krupa, whatever you imagine, go for it. Um, I never heard really a no, small no's maybe, but I never heard really a no from the team. It's the most amazing installation team. Um, they make almost everything possible. It's wonderful to have uh, the head of the technical team here. This shows you already how closely involved everybody is from day one. I think that's something very special and again, a big privilege and really use it. Um, we inaugurated Documenta, sorry, the images are a bit dark. Um, the entrance point in the Friedrichianum was all by women. Never female artist had such a presence. And we were, it was very important for Okwe to really give that space. So when you entered, you saw on, in the core of the spine was Hanne Darboven through all floors. Um, on the left side was Doris Salcedo, Sarina Bimshi. And on the other side was Chori Ch Face Chu. She already passed away. She is an um, Iranian uh, Chu. Um, you, what you see here, what is very dark here, she burned all her production. She felt she has failed as an artist. There is no space for female artists. So what you see here, uh, she called it then the boutique of uh, Chori Face Chu, is her burned paintings, her pur burned work. Katrin David already wanted to show that work. It was very difficult to get it out of Iran. The estate was not cleared. And we finally managed with the support of the French government to bring this work to Kassel. Again, Documenta can do a lot what otherwise is not possible. And we always had this in mind. Um, here you see some works by um, the late Leon Golub. Unfortunately, many of the artists we worked with passed away in the past 18 years. Uh, it was an amazing opportunity to work with those giants of the art world um, who, in the case of Leon Golub, also he, 40 years uh, dedication to the political repression of people in this world. To, and um, what you see here is um, lynching, killing of um, people, intellectuals around the globe for their beliefs, for their race, for their class. So to us, this commitment, um, to make these voices heard was very crucial, to bring what we discussed in the platforms around the world to the core in Kassel, to the people of Kassel, but also to the visitors from around the globe. We also brought many complete studios of artists to Kassel. Here you see the studio of uh, Dieter Roth, who was already passed away when we inaugurated Documenta. How does an artist studio really look? Of course, they look very different. If you go to the offices at Good School, Ruan Grupa looks very different. There are containers. So, but um, Dieter Roth um, was an, a massive um, amount of stuff. And we really wanted to give also the insight at the core of artistic production. Yeah, you see the mess. It was very difficult for our insurance to uh, assume what is the work. And they were very afraid visitors would leave additional stuff. Um, Victor Grippo, he passed away shortly before our opening. So Carlos did the installation. Again, we had a lot of fun and joy for this documenta, but we dealt with a lot of traumatic experiences um, from people like in different parts of the world, like here, uh, Victor Grippo, also in Latin America. Uh, he produced and worked under military regimes and it's school benches where people were writing uh, their poems and so that they experienced and wrote during um, these periods. Um, here uh, we have um, again an installation of Dieter Roth Super 8 films, again a challenge for the conservation team. <laughs> but the sky has no limit, so we showed all of his Super 8 films in parallel every day. Um, or another work by On Kavara. Uh, it was reading one million years in the future and one million years into the past. We had more than 500 volunteers reading every day. They changed every hour. It always had to be a male and a female. 
one reading to the future, one reading to the past, going more and more further apart. Um, on Kavara said, this is a work I never can do. Nobody will be as crazy. Nobody has the resource. Can you guys do that for me? So again, um, artists usually do a work they otherwise cannot do. So be prepared. Uh, Raymond Pettibone in the Tower of the Friedrichsianum, Joel Turling uh, also in the Friedrichsianum, then Documenta Halle, I go quickly in light of time and I hope the catalogs once arrive here, you can look through them. We were the first ones to make a, a so-called picture book because nobody has images of Documenta because when Documenta inaugurates, the catalog is done and nobody ever sees what has happened. So we decided, uh, I think as the first team, to make a picture book so people can see afterwards actually what has happened. Uh, Documenta not only brought studios, 11 brought studios to there, we brought complete exhibitions of other institutions to Kassel. In exhibitions we thought are crucial, they are important, it's great they happened, but they should be seen by a larger audience. So we invited uh, Farid Amali and um, Rashid Nashrawi. Um, it was an exhibition that was done by Vite de Witt in Rotterdam before. It was called From Two, and it talked about a difficult situation in Palestine. Uh, people don't understand it usually, why were the peace negotiations so difficult. But if you want to go from one encampment, from refugee camp to the another, you always have checkpoints, etc. That makes the negotiations so difficult and people often don't understand what is this complicated Israeli-Palestinian fabric. So uh, Farid and, and, um, and um, Rashid basically put uh, films, postcards, etc. together. It was a real research over many years that then got extended in Documenta. Also, Documenta Halle was mainly dedicated to groups, artistic collectives, um, who contribute a lot uh, to our understanding uh, of art, but also there are usually notes at their locality. Um, there are points of, um, uh, yeah, here you have many AP centers. Uh, it's kind of an they are epicenters in their context and resonate um, in the world around them. So this uh, also was a group uh, with Facet from the Senegal, very important there, or Le Group Amos from Kinshasa. Um, they work a lot on at that time um, on uh, the prevention of AIDS and also healthcare, and uh, they did this to street, street, street theater or like um, going into buses, public buses. Uh, TV programs, radio programs. So people said to us, but these African artists are not usually doing wood carvings. And we said, actually, um, they have already cameras and the cameras and the cell phones, which just started now, are maybe cheaper than the wood because this is what they have. So we had to overcome a lot in this respect. Also, there are cliches how the global source is operating. Uh, Andrea Kulunchic and their group, they worked a lot about demographies uh, in the East, post-89, or a group called Park Fiction from Germany, from Hamburg, which really made a public park a public park. Uh, I also encourage you, it's still there, uh, to look this up. It took them 10 years, and it started with an art and public space project, and I think after 15 years, finally, there was a public park instead of a high-rise, so that things are also possible. And then Pascal Martin Tayou, who is uh, from Cameroon and who lives in Brussels, and he transferred a car, basically, and the difficulties of transferring a car from Africa to Europe, the many checkpoints, etc. And he documented that and showed that there. So um, the Kulturbahnhof was dedicated to urban um, questions. So again, we brought a complete exhibition, Constant New Babylon, Constant, um, member of the Situationist International was still alive then, um, so we brought the whole exhibition of uh, Constant New Babylon that was also put together by the Witte de Witt. Um, again, a complete exhibition into the exhibition. Uh, here you see the late David Goldblatt, uh, whose whole life as a photographer and as mentor and educator was dedicated uh, to South Africa, mainly to the townships, where he trained many people, including Sanele Moholi, who you see prominently in this year's Venice Biennale. And um, also here, Valid Rad, member of um, the um, Atlas Group, about the political situation in civil war in his home country in the Lebanon. Or here, Bodi Isik Kingeles, um, who 
basically um, introduced a new possibility of Manhattan after 9-11. We were shortly after 9-11 and we had long debates if we should include anything about like this tremendous um, shake up of the world in the exhibition and we basically decided at the end it's too young, it's too new and it would be very rushed and um, so we only had photographs um, of some of the survivors uh, throughout um, the Binding Halle and otherwise we really said time will tell but we had a photo documentation in the beginning of the catalog and immediately uh, Okri was through his introduction um, essay in the catalog of Documenta 11 was outlined by some as a part of the global jihad, which was quite stunning. Yeah, here binding, we had a few months to get another bigger space ready. Uh, we mentioned already, if you have several thousands and on weekend up to 15,000 people visiting one show, you need space because the visitors also have to be somewhere uh, and you still want to see some artworks. So we um, transformed the former brewery and I just want to show you, like this is on the left side, you see how it looked before. And on the right side, how it looked after. So we had a young uh, design firm, Kunmal Vesi, who never have done anything like that before. We said, we don't want to have star architects because they might not have much time and send their interns anyway. So let's work with a young design firm who really will live with us there, be with us there. And again, we work daily hand in hand with them how this documenta can look and function. So they built a mini city, kind of a village into Binding. Um, this was one of the favorite artworks actually by the then um, um, minister of Hesha. Uh, Mr. Koch, which was stunning because it's a post-colonial kind of constellation by Yinka Shonebare, Gallantry and Criminal Conversation. Um, in the back, Watari Wards. And this is, um, we had a lot, um, Binding focused a lot also on the post-colonial constellation. Here you see Isaac Julian's Paradis Omeros, which was actually filmed in um, St. Lucia, where we had our platform, but he's also born in St. Lucia one of the reasons why we went there. So what we did was also strongly informed by the artist with whom we worked over many years on their project. So it's also a possibility to have almost a three-year conversation with the artists. This is uh, works by um, Shosh Adiakbo. Um, what he did, he said like, he basically made a work on Documenta. It was about Harald Seemann and he brought in what people usually see as typical African art, but it was comments basically about the creation of a documenta. He asked many people and collected uh, ephemer ephemeralia of uh, the documenta and exhibited that. Um, very iconographic was Steve McQueen. It was um, Western Deep, an amazing film he did about a gold mines in South Africa and the daily experience of people working in mines and um, also I think for an artist participating in documenta also the world doesn't stay the same afterwards. It changes tremendously. Also this is a responsibility. The price goes up enormously if they are part of a gallery. So we did not disclose the names of the artist until the day of the press conference. We kept it a secret, so there is no interference, there is no pressure to really leave these artists alone and focusing on their work, because um, you can imagine, uh, imagine what this basically means. Um, Steve McQueen, in the meantime, is an Oscar award-winning filmmaker. Um, yeah, as I said, like for many artists, the world doesn't stay the same after. I just quickly flip through because I think we are late in time. But here also you see Jonah Friedman. Again, I spoke yesterday uh, also with um, Ruin Grupa and with Good School. So Jonah Friedman, uh, architect, he's now almost 100 years old. He's still alive. Um, he works a lot. He worked with models for um, countries that went through earthquakes. He worked with the United Nations. And what he said, like, as an architect, architecture plans are never understood by anyone than an architect or a constructor. So he made drawings how people can self-build by themselves new homes, new shelters after um, natural catastrophes, incidents when they're homeless. So he made these modules and always gave very simple instructions how things can be reconstructed. Um, also here are images from Kobe after the earthquake. Um, 
uh, Ryuji Miyamoto was not allowed to show these images in Japan. They didn't want to have an image of an earthquake and its aftermath because they thought it's like not good for the people, it's not good for the country. So it was very difficult for him to ever show them there, which is also very interesting. Tanya Bruguera from Cuba, um, she had uh, again volunteers who were loading rivals in the space, they were in a dark space and you had constantly rival loading, um, which was a very intense experience. Also there, intense discussions, if one should do that in a museum or not. This work has been bought by the Museum of Modern Art in Frankfurt afterwards. And um, another artist studio, Ivan Kosaric, and here um, a puppet menagerie of like um, marionettes by Jury faced um, by uh, Annette Messerche of bodies, basically exploded bodies. Um, again, one could say in the aftermath of 9-11. So, or the cages uh, of bodies by Louis Bourgeois. And again, another complete exhibition, Fish Story, The Hard Life on the Global Oceans, um, Human Trafficking, etc. by Alain Sekula. But also Morse codes here by um, Sarah Swain Evans. Um, how is communication happening when you cannot talk directly? Um, here, um, ovens and chimneys and um, human beings next to it by the Dutch artist Mark Manders. Um, family disputes um, and situations by Ea Isa Attila. Most of these works, again, commissioned for Documenta. We also had some outdoor works. Um, here, um, very famous, the Batai Monument by Thomas Hirschhorn in the north part of the city. Um, with a library, um, a kiosk. Um, I think it was one of the most favorite uh, projects. He didn't want to go buses to go there, so he painted two taxis, so you could go with a taxi. He didn't want people just uh, flocking into this community. And, um, and it was also run by the community. So this was a very interesting experience to negotiate and discuss with the people on site, Batai. Um, this was the kiosk, um, also very popular because it was open when Documenta closed, so until late night people were there and then a monument uh, he made for the people, uh, trees. But uh, we also had uh, from Sim Park, I don't have another um, image of that, which was in the Orangerie. Um, it was a, a sound tunnel with a lot of sound works, but they also built a whole skateboard bowl where um, skateboard competitions took place and um, yeah, there was lots of activities in that bowl by a complete different audience. And our youngest participants from Singapore then, they were around 24, I think, at Tsunami.net. Um, um, Charles Lim, one of the members who later represented his country at, at the Venice Biennale in 2015. And they basically walked from Kassel to find our server, which was actually in Bremen. So that they walked through about two weeks through Germany to finally detect our server with this um, kind of detecting antenna. Yeah, and again, 118 artists. Um, everything is online, by the way, still. You can find all the talks of all the platforms um, and everything on the artists on Documenta's website. We don't have time for that. So check this. And what is most amazing for me, beside of the real sad passing of Okwi, we are all still very close friends and work very closely together 18 years later and after four years working so tightly together in Documenta. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Utameta Bauer, for your presentation. It was mainly focused on Documenta 11. Uh, and then uh, we're now opening the session of questions and comments, and uh, we start uh, with two uh, questions or comments. Uh, please raise your hand, and then please uh, bring your question and your comments, ABC, accurate, brief, and clear, since we have uh, not much time before the uh, uh, break. Anyone? One? One more?
Tuh, ya. Uh, bisa kasih mic? Oke. Okay. Uh, ya. Oke. Okay. Hi. Hi. My name is Raffi and I want to ask for three of you guys. The first one is what is it really about ruang rupa because we all here have a huge question mark about why ruang rupa because um, this is a huge enough role and this is the first asian group ever of our director in 70 years and it's written everywhere in your um pairs it's um because of Ruang Rupa's great network, what is anything else about Ruang Rupa? And another one, it will be held in Europe, but the art direction itself is from Asia. What do you think the effect will be? Because you know that you will never miss any cultural effect of it. And it will also affect preference and any other aspects. And for Ruang Ruru, what is it? Ruang Ruru, I'm sorry. Ruang Rupa. What is it um, your plan? I mean, with you being appointed, becoming the org direction of Documenta 15, what is it affected to your groups and your projects and your and your environment and everything else. Thank you. Okay, uh, because you question this to Ruang Rupa, three of us, and I'm not the only Ruang Rupa uh, person here. We have Ade Darmawan, we have Ajeng Nurul Aini, we have uh, Reza Avicina, we have uh, Indra Ameng, I think we have also uh, Anarpati Awanga, and also Iswanto Hartono, and uh, Daniela Praptoro. But if you want to ask why Ruang Rupa, ask them, uh, because uh, ask them first. And then your question is also the, what is our plan? Our plan is to make a plan. So uh, uh, save, save your questions to, the, to those speakers. And the second one, please. My name is Jane V. Lutfiananta. Uh, I was uh, in the Research Institute in Indonesia, Badan Pengkajian Penerapan Teknologi. I would like uh, to ask you how uh, the Euro to making the digitalisasi cultural uh, in Euro. You know, our Indonesia, we have the museum, the national of museum. But uh, some of the history in Indonesia, uh, yeah, we have the uh, still hidden our 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 history. Uh, you know, uh, like the I'm the develop movement ninety eight. This is not historical in Indonesia right now. What do, what do you think to the the making the historical in Europe and digitalisasi until now? So. I would like the making the digitalization with uh, like startup uh, resetku.id. I, I have the digitalization and I get support from the ex uh, the presidential the Mr. B J Habibie. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, to answer the first question, so we go to Sabin first and then to Ute. Uh, why is Ruang Rupa? What is anything else about Ruang Rupa? And then about the plan, I already answered. So you don't need to. I would like to pass that to the finding, member of the finding committee, the question, why Ruang Rupa? Because they were the ones chosen. <laughs> and I cannot represent us because we have many different voices, but we unanimously decided this. It's, it's a very difficult task. You can imagine, as you say, there is the world is very big, and who do you choose? So it's really a complicated, long process of um, a, sh a short list, and then um, the list gets shorter, 
and then the people send the proposal, then they have to present themselves. You meet them several times to discuss what could that be. It's taken very seriously and I think they can speak about this. And um, what was very important for us, and as you hopefully saw a bit uh, with Documenta 11, with one example in each of the documentas would be such example. What is it that is so crucial at this moment in time? What really bothers the world and how do how does the artistic world react to that? How does do artists react to what's going on in the world? And we saw this very crucial in a moment when the market becomes so big and overshadowing to artistic production. Why have we been in the art to begin with? It's usually to voice what we think needs to be said, uh, to comment um, what needs to be commented on, and also really to give this freedom back to the arts. And I think this discussion we had, and without singling anybody out, we had also other good proposals, but this commitment to a creative common, what could be a new commoning? How can the world be maybe more just, and how can resources and education be better distributed? And also, how could there be access to different languages of self-expression without being expressionist, but having this possibility of um, saying something about the world either through literature or through arts, etc. and how could this be owned together? We thought this is something very bold and very important and we need more of that in our time. And we thought um, we will see. I mean, with Ock, we also ne nobody knew he was 35. He didn't do much. A documenta, and this I think is also very important, each time risks itself. So it's really up to them. They get the possibility. And what they make out of it, we don't know. And so we just thought this is something that excited all of us um, to, to have this ambition. We also think the world is bigger than Europe and um, it's, it's very important we hear from other parts of the world about the world and the rest, Rungrupa will tell us. Um, and I think also the last point uh, is very important for the documenta itself and uh, we had the impression um, after uh, uh, hearing about this decision for Ruan Grupa that it that this should be an impact from the, uh, this oncoming um, uh, documenta to have an other viewpoint on the world and this concept it was uh, Juan Grupa did not um, um, present a final exhibition but a process to get to a final uh, exhibition and in this process um, part having a lot of people collectives from all over the world artists and intellectuals speakers participating and developing uh, uh, together uh, this sort of an exhibition so it was also something about having another uh, not not the one artistic director because no one thinks uh, believes really anymore that one person does know about the the art in the world or the impact art can have in the world but that in this way of including a lot of perspectives include, including a lot of other collectives and other artists that this is a way maybe to proceed and um, and which might also be interesting for the world which start started always getting closer together so that uh, communities start to close themselves off from the rest of the world and that this might be a very, very dangerous process and that this documenta might show how this uh, works in a different way and that openness and being including people uh, is maybe a better way to the future which we sometimes might have forgotten. So these were all ideas if you ask for your second question what we hope this documenta will have as an impact. Uh, th that would be it uh, to open up the world again and uh, sh uh, uh, giving more trust into each other, into all of us, that in working together we could achieve more than if we close off ourselves. So, And the processes uh, that Juan Krupa proposed went into this direction and of course they are working like that since 18 years while others to always talk about including people but don't do it in the same way. So it's more always this uh, 
position from above going down, and here we, uh, it's uh, getting together and doing things together. So it's something really different. And also to include the locality, um, I think is a very important uh, point, so that maybe we don't believe anymore in the big solutions for the world, but maybe I think this was something that was said in little pockets of hope that develop locally and then uh, can be um, possible. Uh, uh, examples or uh, best practice examples for others where they can follow and uh, sharing ideas. So I think this was what it was all about. Of course, we don't know the result because it is processes. So and this is never thought from the end from but from the beginning. But that makes it so exhilarating. And uh, we are all really looking very much forward to, uh, to it because also, I th think you saw that on the pictures, it was also a very positive and spirited atmosphere. And I th think this kind of optimism and working together is also something wet which might help. As you said, the heart of an Indonesian might be helpful for the rest of the world also. <laughs> uh, anyone from Rang Rupa who wants to answer? Ade? Yeah. Uh. Thank you for the question. Uh, I, I think that's already answered most of it, but uh, I think we should also uh, uh, talk about from our side, <laughs> like what's the risk, sort of, because uh, when we, we maybe to share uh, all of you here also a uh, little bit of our experience <coughs> uh, in the process, actually, because uh, Uto maybe uh, and Sabine already tell you about like the process of from uh, from sort of like the commenter side but like for us for example when we get I call it <coughs> when we get uh, offer let's say uh, would you do this like uh, to, to send like our first proposal uh, we actually back uh, uh, to gather again like 10 of us and then also like questions us like what's what's uh, what's the what's also important for us is not only about this is this is should be a dialogue rather than rather than only like us like being work for documenta for the world but also like and and we we all we also already have a lot of things uh, that's been uh, uh, done I mean we we've been working for 19 years uh, uh, so and then we just actually just moving our infrastructure and then build uh, the the good school the the ecosystem and everything so it's all the things like in our head is actually there uh, so and then so like the invitation is actually uh, the only make sense or the only sense for us is actually to invite back uh, uh, <laughs> uh, documenta uh, uh, to be uh, not only us going there, but also how how what thing that can be shared together, and then also what kind of uh, a dialogue that can be uh, not only between only between us, but also can be spread all over the world. So that's why we come up with uh, not a theme. Actually, we didn't we didn't we didn't really like propose or like uh, have a plan for a theme, but like uh, it's more it's more uh, a structure or or method rather than. Uh, uh, rather than a theme, uh, rather than a subject, so so that's that's what we actually also uh, still <coughs> we work on that. For example, we 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 uh, we plan or we uh, 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 we're doing research uh, on a similar uh, or more enriching uh, model on on uh, new economic and also uh, sustainability. And also uh, informal uh, education. So in in that sense, we sort of like uh, go to that uh, focus, and then and then trying to develop on that matters, uh, uh, sort of like an, a new platform. So it's going to be, uh, of course. Uh, I remember when uh, in the interview when we when we sort of like in, in in the middle of the interview. When we we explain our 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 plans, and then one of the jury was cutting our uh, uh, interview and by saying like, 
so there is no exhibition. <laughs> Somebody was uh, saying that, uh, and then we, we explain again. Of course, like exhibition, it's, it's sort of like also a, a model to 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 to, to translate uh, knowledge and experience. But also, there's a lot of things that that we should also think. So. So it's not going to be only exhibition, but but also there is a lot of model that we and structure that we actually uh, think of. Uh, uh, I hope it's it's really answer your <laughs> questions. But uh, uh, again, uh, for us, it's also important uh, to have a really dialogue between uh, between uh, here and there, and also uh, the rest of the world. Uh, Reza Vicina maybe wants to say something? No? Fine? Uh, okay. Uh, what about the second questions about the digitalization? Something uh, they may be uh, touch upon the documentus program. I'm not sure if this is rather a question to Ruan Grupa um, in uh, what kind of way you would try to include pro projects like that. Of course, there have been projects far as I understood uh, you, that have been part uh, of the documenta and the exhibition, but um, I'm not completely sure if it will be included in this one. I think maybe it's a bit too early to discuss, or at least it would be an ex a decision on your side what it will be part of it uh, in terms of real projects. So one of the things that makes documenta documenta is that the documenta itself does not um, interfere with the uh, uh, project uh, or with the, the with the uh, artistic direction. So they have really the freedom to decide what fits into that documenta, what topics they want to tackle, and what is an important uh, point. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sabine and uh, Uta, for the 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 answer. And uh, I hope this this, this answer is. Uh, also uh, good for the uh, the two questions, but actually we can st we can continue to discuss uh, outside of this room since we have a uh, short time uh, to 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 break uh, fif uh, about 15 minutes. So unfortunately, we we should close this session, and then uh, thank you again for Utameta Bauer and uh, Dr. Sabine Shorman for this <laughs> session. Uh, Outside of this room, there is a loop of video of uh, a documentation, video documentation of Documenta from, from 1955 to the uh, 14. Uh, it's in a loop uh, outside of this room. And the second session will be moderated with, by uh, Farid Rakun and uh, Daniela Praptono from Orang Rupa. We'll present uh, speakers from uh, Jakarta, Serum, and Kelas Pagi Papua, from Papua. Kunci Cultural Studies Yogyakarta in Leptanya, uh, Jakarta, and Ernie Alajai from Banggai Laut Central Sulawesi, uh, and Agus Nur Amal from Best in Jakarta in Aceh. Thank you so much for your attention, and uh, see you again in the next session.